Starting us off at number 10 is a plastic bag. That's right, folks, even the deepest spot on Earth isn't free of man's worst creation ever. Single-use plastics. During one of the deepest dives ever recorded, famous underwater explorer Victor Vescovo traveled seven miles below the ocean's surface down to the Mariana Trench. While down there, Vescovo and his crew discovered tons of new and interesting things, but not all of them were cool. He reported that he also found a plastic bag and even some candy wrappers. Down at the deepest place on Earth. So, that's cool. Folks, I don't think it's a hard concept to understand, but please don't litter. Things like plastic bags were not made to help out anyone but ourselves. These cause a great danger to our wildlife all around the world, and if we have to use these materials, just please dispose of them properly. No one else should have to put up with your trash except for the garbage man. Moving into number nine, we have a really old car that was pulled out of the water in Oklahoma. There was actually bodies pulled from the car as well, and this car was linked to a crime back in the 70s. It's consistent with a car accident. Back in 1971, two South Dakota girls were on their way back to an end of school party, and this party took place in a gravel pit. And this is when they went missing, and it wasn't until 2013 that this missing case was finally solved. Well, guess what? This story doesn't stop there. There was actually a second car, and there was another disappearance of a man in his 60s. I mean, this guy went missing without a trace. There was a body also found in a car. I mean, is this real life right now? What the heck is going on? How can two cars just disappear into a body of water and it's just deemed an accident. Maybe there is more going on with this case. I would have so many more questions. Something amazing is up next at number eight. Have you guys ever heard of an underwater river? Okay, good, me, me neither. I don't know what the heck this is. Well, let's take a look. It's literally a river that flows underwater. Well, at least that's what it looks like. I think this is so trippy and I'm not sure how it's even possible. Well, that was the Black Sea undersea river that was discovered in 2010. So the discovery of this river wasn't even that long ago. This river is the first of its kind in the world. The depiction of God found underwater is up next at number seven. Now this one is very interesting. The god Hepi, which is also known as the Nile God, is the god of the annual flooding of the Nile in the ancient Egyptian religion. But this figure was found underwater off the coast of Egypt, which just gives me more questions. This statue was found in the newly discovered ancient city, Heraklion, also known by its Egyptian name, Thonis. Divers were able to dive down to retrieve the 16 foot statue. Next up, number six, we have the world's richest man on this list. And no, it's not because he was found at the bottom of the ocean. I don't think someone swam down there and that's how Jeff Bezos was born. He's a robot, that's him and water just don't mix. Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos, AKA the world's richest man, spent money to recover the Apollo 11 F1 rocket engines. Well, he was able to recover the Apollo 11 mission rocket that was launched back in 1969. I was sitting in my living room one day and I thought, you know, all of those Apollo F1 engines are sitting there. They're on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and theoretically you could recover them. So yeah, that's exactly what he did and he donated it to a museum. And at number five, we have the Stonehenge in Lake Michigan. I'm on a quest to investigate a mysterious pattern of rocks discovered under Lake Michigan that some are calling America's underwater Stonehenge. The original Stonehenge is located about 90 miles west of central London in the country of Wiltshire. Archaeologists believe it was constructed from 3000 BC to 2000 BC, and no one knows how it got there or why it's even there. The Stonehenge in Lake Michigan has the same mysteries that surround it. It's believed that the Stonehenge has been underwater for at least 5,000 years. On one of the rocks, there seems to be a carving of a mastodon. Sketching it, once you, once you outline the lines, it looks like we... Looks like a mastodon. Unbelievable. A mastodon carving on a rock that hasn't seen daylight in at least 5,000 years. Mastodons are distantly related to the elephants about 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. Moving into number four, we have trucks that were found at the bottom of the water about 42 meters down. There were about 120 large vehicles found, and this was due to a ship that sank back in 1980.
The ferry that sank was actually quite large. Here's a picture of it. The name of the ship is Zenobia and is from Sweden and it capsized in the Mediterranean Sea. It has now become one of the best diving sites in the world. Next up, number three, I have to talk about the Titanic that is sitting currently at the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean. The boat sank back in 1912, which was 107 years ago. More than 1,500 people died from the disaster. The last surviving passenger on board of the Titanic actually passed away not too long ago, back in 2009. This was Eliza Gladys Dean, who was just two months old when she was on board the Titanic. I think that this is just incredible, and I have no idea how she even survived. She was the youngest passenger on board, but somehow was among the very few people that was able to survive. She lived until 97 years old, and for the Titanic, I wonder why they're not able to just pull it out of the water and have it featured in a museum. I mean, it's a pretty big part of history, but I'm sure it would cost a lot to retrieve it. Alright, number two, we have this. Is this real life right now? How would something like this magically appear at the bottom of the ocean? Well, actually, this is confirmed to be man-made. Okay, I was freaking out there for a second. This is actually an underwater museum. This was created by an English sculptor, Jason DeCaris Taylor, and these statues have gained a ton of attention, and it's it's located at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea, not far from the island of Grenada. The first exhibits were placed there back in 2006. I don't know why, but I think it's very creepy. It, it's cool, but it still creeps me out. Finally, number one, we have the Sunken Pyramid. This is the Yonaguni Monument, also known as the Yonaguni Submarine Topography, which is located in Japan. This underwater pyramid was discovered back in 1986 when divers went there looking for hammerhead sharks. This area was known for large populations of hammerhead sharks. There's a ton of speculations that surround this underwater findings. People believe that it could be a lost city, a lost civilization perhaps. Maybe this was man-built thousands of years ago and it can possibly also be naturally made. Number 10. Yellow Brick Road. Deep sea divers may have found the road to Atlantis this year. Yeah, this is a good one. May 2022, this bizarre path was spotted in the Pacific Ocean after an exploration vessel, Nautilus, caught the rocky formation next to Hawaii. The exploration team said in a recent interview with We On News that our corps of exploration have witnessed incredible and unique fascinating geological formations while diving on the Lily Yukalani Ridge. The 90 degree fractures are most likely the result of eruptions from long ago. So, but volcanic activity, it's not a yellow brick road after all, but it is cool to look at. This area of the ocean is the largest fully protected conservation area in the world. And this explains why. Literally there's Wizard of Oz stuff happening below. No one wants to tell us anything. Covering more than 580,000 square miles. So far we've only discovered 3% of the seafloor. So I'm sure there's many more discoveries coming our way. In our number nine spot today, we have the fact that life exists. The first time anyone ever went on a deep dive into the Mariana Trench, no one was exactly expecting to find signs of life in the extreme environment of the deep sea. So it was quite a shock when they found out it was absolutely teeming with life. Because of the lack of sunlight, or really any light, in the Mariana Trench, you won't find any plant life or algae, but there are tons of living beings, from microorganisms to scary looking fish. All of the life in the trench has had to adapt in one way or another in order to live in this environment, whether that is naturally developing pressure proof shells or having insane ice sight that can catch even the faintest glimmer or having other heightened senses that can help detect prey or predators. All of these special adaptations help us understand more about how life in the deep sea evolved, but some can even be used to help us advance scientifically and medically. It is no small feat to head down to the Mariana Trench, but the more we can discover down there, the better. At number eight, we have Jupiter-like microbes. Say what? Back in 2012, during the Deep Sea Challenge expedition, researchers found these fuzzy mats of bacteria clinging to the rocks at the bottom of the trench. Usually one of the first things scientists look for in the harshest places on Earth are any signs of life possible. It helps them understand how life can be possible in parts of the world or even the universe that don't operate like Earth's habitable places. When scientists explored the Serena deep part of the trench with a robotic lander, they found evidence of a thriving microbial community down and around the deep sea rocks. These microbes appear to feed off of the 
the chemicals produced with the sea when the sea floor rocks react with the water because they don't rely on the falling of the marine snow. It raises questions and possible hypotheses for scientists that maybe this is how some life forms exist in the farthest reach of our universe, such as Jupiter and Saturn's moons. In our number seven spot today, we have the Daikoku Seamount. This seamount is located within the Mariana Arc and was fairly recently found to be hydrothermally active. So basically, it is a functioning underwater volcano, which is super cool. That is not even the cool and unexpected discovery I want to talk about today. During the submarine Ring of Fire expedition in 2006, it was realized that this seamount happens to also feature a pool of liquid sulfur. That might not seem like the most amazing thing, but it is definitely very cool. Firstly, the way it looks is absolutely insane because it has gases rising off of it, which appear as smoke, but like smoke underwater. I don't know the science behind it, but all I know is that it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. The next reason why this is super cool is because of the fact that this is almost never seen here on Earth, and the only other time we found a comparable pool of sulfur to this one has been on Jupiter's moon Io. At number six, we have the Mariana snailfish. At 8,143 meters below the surface, scientists discovered a new kind of fish they call the Mariana snailfish. This is a white translucent fish that has broad wing like fins and an eel like tail and slowly glides near the bottom of the ocean floor. You can also see its liver from the outside of its body. Eww. While this is the deepest they have ever found an actual fish, researchers don't believe there is much more swimming below that. The amount of pressure is so high that they don't believe any fish is chemically able to withstand the destabilizing effects of its proteins at the depth. So the Mariana snailfish may just be the deepest dwelling fish on the entire planet, which I'm sure we are all hoping for some large, weird, space looking like deep sea monster, but for now we will just have to settle for a snailfish. It's okay little guy, I still love ya. In our number 5 spot today we have human mercury pollution. It was once believed that methyl mercury was mostly produced in the top few hundred meters of the ocean, which would have limited the mercury bioaccumulation because it was thought that the fish who make their home in the deep sea would have a very limited opportunity to ingest the methyl mercury. But a recent discovery has shown that this is just not true. According to two separate studies which were presented at the Goldschmidt Geochemistry Conference, there is clear evidence of the presence of both man made and natural methyl mercury which is quite toxic. This means that since this is spreading to the absolute depths of the Mariana Trench, the pollution is turning out to be much more widespread than what was once thought. They know that it is coming from the mercury in the upper ocean because of some sort of isotope evidence. The reason this discovery is important is because when mercury reaches the depths of the sea, it is turned into methyl mercury, the super toxic one, by tiny microbes. From there it gets eaten by small crustaceans who then get eaten by fish who then get eaten by bigger fish and so on and so forth and then it gets into our food web which is dangerous for both humans and animals. It is unclear exactly what is going to happen with this information but I guess it's good to have the whole picture in order to make the best most educated decisions. At number 4 we have urethenes plasticus. As we learned earlier the Mariana Trench has not gone untouched by plastics. Well back in 2014 scientists discovered a new species at 6900 meters below and the tiny crustacean was found to already have ingested some of Earth's plastic. Therefore, they gave it the name Urethenes plasticus. With the support of the World Wildlife Foundation in analyzing the newly discovered species, scientists found a 6.5 millimeter large piece of large microfiber made up of 80% PET in its body. PET is a substance found in a variety of commonly used household items such as water bottles and workout clothes. Now it's also found in deep sea wildlife, so much that we're naming deep sea creatures after plastics. This one is alarming because in the deepest parts of our planet that we know the least about, even less than space, we're still finding humans making their mark before humans even get there themselves. <laughs> Yikes. Let's hope we don't have to start naming species uh, Rubberus Americanus or even Coca Cola Soft Drinkus. Hmm? In our number three spot today, we have ocean sediment. Okay. There's sediment in all of our oceans, so this one definitely doesn't seem like it should be on this list, but the Mariana Trench sediment is unique because of its extreme depth. While there are of course large fish who eat other fish, what do the small fish and living creatures who don't eat other fish eat? Since there's no plants, that is why researchers collected samples of the sediment that lays on the floor of the Mariana Trench, to see what it is made out of, to see what the heck these guys are eating. As it turns out, if the organisms aren't eating chemicals, 
they're eating the leftovers from the fish that live closer to the surface of the ocean. These leftovers float down to the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean, which is referred to as sea snow, and that is what becomes the meal for the smallest creatures living in the trench. Kind of gross when you think about it, but I'm happy for them. Coming in at number two, we have scalding hot water. That's right, just like Katy Perry, the Marianas Trench is hot and cold. At the deepest spot on Earth where basically no sunlight can get through, you would expect that the water was extremely cold, right? Wrong. Well, okay, maybe kind of right. The water usually stays between 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit, but also wrong. The water at the bottom of the Mariana Trench can also get scalding hot. At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, there are many different hydrothermal vents and the water that erupts out of these vents can reach temperatures of 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is enough to scald anyone swimming down there. But fortunately, the pressure is way too high for anyone to actually swim down there, so that won't be happening anytime soon. That being said, for those that decide to dive deep, 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 deep down there, make sure that the deep sea sub you're in is not only pressurized, but also has an AC, because you don't want to cook like a boiled lobster. In our number one spot today, we have giant amphipods. I will never not be fascinated by these things, so here we are again with more giant amphipod facts. Amphipods are little crustaceans that can be found in most waters on Earth, and they're kind of like shrimp. The Mariana Trench variety are absolutely shocking compared to the amphipods we are used to, and that is because they are like the Shaquille O'Neal of shrimps. They're huge! These guys can be found 35,797 feet or 10,911 meters deep in the trench, and while most amphipods are like two to three centimeters or about an inch long. These guys are a whopping 34 centimeters or just over 13 inches long. Like what? A scientist explained that the discovery is a bit like finding a foot long cockroach. And I have to say that the surprise may be the same, but I would rather find a huge shrimp than a huge cockroach any day. Before the discovery of these guys, researchers didn't even know that amphipods could grow this large, so it's safe to say that they certainly were not expecting this discovery. All right guys. Starting us off, in at number 10, let's talk about the ancient computer. So that was the Antikythera mechanism, which is also known as the ancient Greek analog computer, which means computers might have actually been around for thousands of years. In fact, experts believe that it came from a time between 100 and 205 BC. This computer was retrieved from the sea back in 1901, and it was found off a wreckage off the coast of the Greek island, Antikythera, hence the name of this ancient computer. There have been several replicas of this device to demonstrate how it would operate. Apparently this device was able to calculate the motion of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Number nine. Norfolk's Royal Shipwreck. Okay, so this initial discovery happened way back in 2007, believe it or not, but it was a secret until recently. Now I'm here to tell you all the tea. On May 6th, 1682, a ship called the Gloucester got stuck in a sandbank off the coast of Norfolk. And then an hour later, she sank. Now one of these passengers was the future King James II of England. He escaped in a small boat, thankfully, quick decision that literally changed the course of history. These two diving brothers found the ship back in 2007, but now it's official, now it's confirmed. Firm, so now we could talk about it. Just last month, it was officially announced. This was the lost ship indeed. Maritime expert Claire Jowett calls this recent discovery the single most significant historic maritime discovery since the raising of the Mary Rose. Number eight, Crusader Sword. Me, personally, I'm a shell guy. Love the shells, maybe rocks every now and then. I see a nice shell, I'm going for it, okay? I don't care who's living in there. I gotta listen, sounds of the sea. But a sword that once belonged to a Crusader Knight? I mean, sure, that's fun too. Shells, swords, they're both good. An Israeli scoop a diver, not even that far experienced, ended up stumbling across one of the coolest discoveries back in 2021. Shlomi Katzen was diving off the Caramel Coast in Israel, and as well as a badass sword, the diver also found anchors, ancient stones, pottery fragments, all from around 900 years ago. See, me and myself, I wouldn't even notice this. It's covered in barnacles. It doesn't even look like a sword, other than the shape. Maybe the odd shape of a sword, that's it. That's a great find. No submerged curses, no Mayan ruins, just, just a nice, cool sword. We love that. Number seven, the Great Lakes Griffin. Back in 2018 in Lake Michigan, diver Steve Libert found what he believed was the holy grail of Great Lakes shipwrecks. The Griffin sank
sank back in 1679. Divers have been searching for this beauty for years and years. Now, as a kid, Steve Libert was talking about the shipwreck when his history teacher stopped and said, hey, who knows? Maybe one of you will find the griffin. Imagine that. Your grade 8 teacher tells you that somebody might find a ship, and that somebody ended up being you. Fascinating. So at 67 years old, he discovered the wreck. It was 2018, but his research began 40 years prior. It's a long time coming. Liebert began diving in 1981. Took a very long time to track this one down. So if you're in any Great Lakes, keep your eyes open for, you know, 50 foot long ships from the late 1600s. Number six, magnificent alien. Okay, tinfoil hats, put them on folks. Now's the time. In a list of deep sea discoveries, how don't I talk about this little guy? While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered back in 2020. It was named Advina Magnifica, which translates to magnificent alien. Yeah, this sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. And to be fair, it looks like an alien. It looks like a literal extraterrestrial. An ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. They found it in what they called a forest of weird, which is a cool nickname, I guess. Christiana Castello Bronco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview, saying that all these organisms are intricately connected. By documenting and describing marine diversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth. In this case, in the ocean. End quote. This little guy could be the key to humanity's survival. I feel it. He looks confident, doesn't he? He looks like he knows what's up. Number five. Comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what lies in our oceans, and that scares the shit out of me, honestly. We discover some crazy fish every single year. Deep sea fish with bioluminescence are for sure aliens, while others are just natural predators that we haven't seen yet. Like the comb star, for example, which is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin. Tetrodoxin is a deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis almost instantly. For every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxins to take out 500 mice. And before you ask, no, we don't have an antidote yet. So avoid all the oceans, please. Number four, toxic waste. We mentioned in this list a 900 year old crusader sword. That was a good time, but not all discoveries are the most amazing, okay? Many deep sea ROV trips are not ideal. We don't want to discover what's going on down there. We don't want to know. We don't always find a mammoth tusk or a glow in the dark shark. Sometimes we find this. Sometimes we find barrels of waste. This dump site here was discovered off the coast of LA, 3,000 feet deep. ROVs found around 27,000 barrels of toxic waste. Yeah, the 2021 discovery was deemed staggering. I'll definitely agree with that one. You can literally see this aura of toxic waste coming from all these spots. It's brutal, this is horrible. No fish in sight, wonder why. Number three, the deepest shipwreck. The USS Johnston was a US Navy destroyer which sank during the Battle of Samar in 1944. It sank after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese Japanese warships. Victor Viscavo, who is one of the few people who has made the dive into the Marianas Trench, was one of the people who first stumbled upon the remains of said sunken warship. The ship's remains were first found in 2019 and was known as the deepest known shipwreck as it was found 6,456 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. We now have a new record holder, believe it or not. The world's deepest, deepest shipwreck was discovered four miles underwater in the Philippines. The US destroyer sunk during World War II and it sits at the depth of 22,900. 916 feet. The USS Samuel B. Roberts, or the Sammy B, probably won't be beat record-wise. This is extremely rare and so deep. I can't even fathom how deep this is. Number two, Mayan caves. Back in 2018, a diver was exploring flooded caves in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. They were diving around and saw this peculiar opening, so they just had to check it out, right? The divers accidentally discovered one of the largest underwater cave systems in the world. That ought to be fun. It's better than a sword, I guess. A team of divers then explored many kilometers of Mayan history. Bones everywhere. A lot of bones. National Geographic of course got involved and explains that these skulls, given the amount found, were more than likely involved in some sort of ancient sacrifice. Yeah, they found an ancient burial site underwater. See ya. I'd go right back up so fast. Many elongated skulls were found, suggesting that the ancient Mayans were up to something a little darker last time these caves were occupied. If curses are real, there's probably a few in here, so... Avoid them. And finally, number one, a cursed tablet. We'll end this list off with a super recent discovery. It's small, but it is mighty. This tablet here was discovered and it comes in at just two centimeters by two centimeters. Very small. Discovered in 2022 in the West Bank, this artifact has historians scratching their heads because it's a couple hundred years older than any Hebrew text previously. It predates the Dead Sea Scrolls by 1,350 years. These ancient letters, once translated, mean to call on to anybody who breaks this curse. There's around 40 proto 
alphabetic letters, early Hebrew writing, all folded onto this tiny little lead tablet. Also, the fact that this small tablet mentions the curse of Yahweh is pretty alarming. The sediment comes from excavations done in the 80s on Mount Ebal, so many believe that this is from the ancient stone structure, Joshua's altar, which would make sense. The tablet was dated to around 1200 BC, and the chemical isotopes in the tablet suggest that it's from mountainous ranges in Greece, or possibly from the mountain of curse. Yeah, the mountain of curse, that's a hard pass for me. That's worse than Death Mountain in Zelda. I'm out.